Okay, welcome back to tutorial 3B. This is the second part of, of the third lesson in the first tutorial series about 3D Rad because we're going over the objects you have available to use from your toolbox in 3D Rad. And just for the sake of, of the videos not getting so incredibly long, I broke it up into two sections. Because um, if you actually take count, there's 59 current objects that you have available to use and that's just the ones that come with the program so the last time we covered the first um, 31 and now we're gonna cover the the leftover 28 the next object we have is the P car this is actually very similar to the car object that we talked about in the last lesson and the one that we loaded into our our demo project the difference is that the P car has a ton of extra options that really focus on the individual physics of the wheels and the chassis and the overall physical dynamics of the car itself it just has a, when you when you use it you'll see but it's just it just has a great level of detail uh, focused around better car physics in your games next object we have is the point light and this object is nice because it allows you to add lighting to your game and getting into different lighting effects that you might use and the point light is what will get you there. The next object we have is the projectile and this object can be used for anything from bullet physics to throwing objects to airplanes that shoot missiles. I mean the projectile object has a lot of different applications but it has the physics and the properties set up so that it's very easy to plug in and test in your projects. The next object we have is called the race tracker and this object doesn't have any geometry but it pretty much gives you a racing game right out of the box. With a race tracker and a couple of of waypoints you can make an entire race circuit that the game will actually be able to keep track of so you can do positions and you can do you know whatever whatever you want to add to your racing circuit so that it'll work properly start finish all that stuff the next object which is one of the most used objects I think in the entire toolbox is the rigid body these are the objects that you will use for physics and the rigid body has a whole lesson dedicated to itself but basically to very simply put it rigid bodies are objects that will react to physics and you can design them any way you want you can give them mass and friction and and elasticity and all that kind of stuff very very fun object very useful also the next object is rock and the rock object well, it might not seem necessary because we already have rigid bodies. The rock is a nice way for you to populate your test worlds to see, you know, what it might look like and to give you a better vision. The next object we have is the scanner. This object is is interesting, but it has a lot of practical use. Um, a scanner object can be used to determine distances between objects. It can be used to determine if you've struck an object, say if you have a gun and you fire a bullet, or you want to use a scanner to have an instant uh, detection for something. And there are demos associated with these things, so to better understand. Now the next object I technically would mention last, but I'm just doing these in order, and that is the script object. Remember I said that even though the program is for non-coders there's a whole scripting system? The script object is a tool just like all the other ones. However, when you add a script to your object you are given access to a scripting window. And when that happens you can start typing code and any object you link to the script will give you access to further properties that might not necessarily be available in the properties of the object itself. The script is an absolutely fantastic object and you're going to be using this more often than you think. The next object is the skin mesh and this object is also one you're going to use a lot and this is your basically your 3D geometry. Every asset that you're going to make for your game in some way shape or form is going to have a skin mesh or a model associated with it and this is the object that gets you there plus this also lets you do all kinds of things with animation and shaders and path following and bone animation and it's just it's it's another lesson all its own but the skin mesh 
is your object where you actually put in your 3D models. The next object in the list is the skybox. Skyboxes are cool because they eliminate the need to make extra geometry so that you can give your world a more immersive environment. If I actually double click this right out of the gate, add the skybox feature, you can see what's happened. I've got a sky in my program and already the game looks better just by adding the skybox. So I just thought that'd be fun to show you. Um, but and you can create your own too. You're not limited to the ones that come with the program. If you can, you know, get the the images for the panoramics and put them all in the right file name, you can make any skybox you want. The next object in the list, actually the next two are very similar, but the next one is the sound effect. Yes, we have to have sound in our game, don't we? And background music and bells and whistles. The sound effect object gets you there. Now the sound effect is primarily, I would say, for sounds that you want to play um, to the player or background music. Because the next object, the sound source, is more for adding 360 sound that is specific to a, an object in your world. Uh, one example of this is a car engine, or a waterfall, or a character speaking, or uh, something exploding, the sound source is, is useful for things like that. When you actually want to physically put the sound in one spot in your world and emanate, whereas the sound effect is more for um, background, ambient noise, background music, or if you have, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, like in, in Borderlands, they have a messaging system from the characters. Sometimes they come up on your, your, your HUD and a sound effect could be used for that because it doesn't matter how far away they are it always is the same level the next object is the spring this is another interesting physics object that's similar to the joint but the spring allows you to do kind of different things with physics there's a demo associated with this too but it's a fun tool to play with if you want to get really crazy with physics objects the spring might be your cup of tea now the next object which is another one that uh, we actually saw in the very first tutorial called the sprite but this is where your 2D graphics come in all the 2D graphics whether it's a heads up display or you have uh, icons on the screen or you've got menus anything like that sprites are your friend and what's great about this software is you can actually translate your sprites into 3D space so they're not just limited to the 2D aspect although that's what primarily I use them for but they can be translated to 3D space an example of this is the interior of a car you can translate your sprite of the speedometer into the car so that it will actually move while you're playing the game very interesting stuff but the sprite is basically your 2D graphics the next object in the list here is the sunlight object and when you when you if you notice when when I made my default program there was automatically lighting you could even see the shadow of the car uh, when you add a sunlight object you have you can actually change the parameters of that global lighting and it it also allows you to do things with shadows and then your point lights make more sense so th that's basically what the sunlight is for the next one in the list is the switch object and this is also pretty self-explanatory this is allows you to do switching um, a lot of times we do switching in our script uh, environment, but if you're not going to script, you can use this object to make switches, such as, such as when an event happens. You can switch an object out for something else. The next one we've seen already is the terrain. This is a default terrain structure that uh, allows you to do tests of different things. It's not really meant to be customizable and if you were going to make your own custom terrain it would actually be created as a rigid body the next one is the text print this is another uh, aspect of rad that allows you to put words on the screen and you can make your own fonts if you want to it comes with one default font that's okay but the text print allows you to put text on your screen so that you can put instructions or dialogue or anything like that the next object is interesting it's called the trail and the trail object is basically a special kind of particle effect that leaves trails behind your objects. Some examples of this are the airplane. Uh, if you use the airplane demo, you'll notice that there are trails coming off of the wings. And this trail object can achieve that. It can also do other things, like if you wanted to show a, an atom floating through space, you could put trails on it to make it look cooler. 
a lot of possibilities there. This next object, Transform, is an object that allows you to do special transformations to objects that are already in your scene. It's not so much a physics object, but uh, if you have certain events that you want to do, uh, it does have applications for transforming and rotating, and also in a relationship between different objects for transforming. The next object is the tree object, very self-explanatory, just like the rock, and it allows you to add trees to your environment. The next one is the value label, and actually um, the value label and the value bar object are both uh, very similar, and they allow you to add different uh, visual aspects to the values that you're going to output to your project. And of course, the value print, which is the more numeric version of the value labeling, and this will act, this will put the numbers on the screen. This can be anything from a level to a score to a damage amount, to anything that requires a value, and usually a value print is also something that can be changed by a script or a counter or an event. Next we have the velocity object. Now this is similar in some ways to the force object that we talked about in the last lesson, but the velocity object is, I mean it says velocity and that's what it is, but it also allows you to give a lot of initial conditions for the forces that you're going to apply to your different objects. Uh, one example of this is some racing games the car actually starts at the starting line but is already moving and you can use that for an initial velocity co coupled with an AI and then once it crosses the finish line then you gain control of the 3, 2, 1, go. So that's that's one of the ways velocity. Velocity can also be used to fire things off at rest or give them a, a shot from a, a, a location that you, you design, such as uh, forcing something off a cliff. The next object is called Waypoint. This object is used in conjunction with the race tracker. Primarily, there may be other applications for it, but mainly it's used with the race tracker, and it allows the race tracker to keep track. By every time you cross a waypoint, it will evaluate your position so that you can have a standing and it will evaluate the amount of laps you've made around the circuit based on how many waypoints you've set up. The next object is wheel. This is a special object that is separate from the car because the car comes with the wheels built in. But if you want to design your own custom vehicles, but you're not sure how to get the wheel physics to work, well, you can just attach wheels to it. And the final object here is the wind object. This is another interesting aspect of physics but this will allow you to add a wind property to your project so you can blow things around. So there's the toolbox. There's all the objects and a brief description of what they do. Some of these are more involved than others, but they all allow you to create pretty much any kind of game that you want. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you uh, how exactly you're going to get these assets to work and we're going to talk about custom assets so that you can start making uh, or at least learn how to make your own objects and get them into your game so I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video